Top of the morning to you, YouTube, and happy Heftober. Hope everybody's enjoying their October so far. So before, I wanted to preface this video um, just by saying that uh, a part of Heftober 2019 that was uh, pretty popular that a lot of people seemed to like was me reading the scary stories to tell in the dark stories. So um, a new book came out. Uh, it's called uh, Scary Stories, A Tribute. And it's a bunch of short stories written in the same vein with the same kind of drippy Stephen Gamble type of drawings. Uh, I just ordered it. Um, so I don't have a physical copy right here right yet. Uh, I will be doing a review on it. But uh, I am going to be reading stories from it. Uh, not, you know, a ton of them. Or maybe I will. Who knows? But as of right now, we just got this one. We're going to do a couple more. I definitely know. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoy this. I'm sorry I don't have the book at the moment, uh, but it's pretty cool. ScaryStoriesTribute.com. ScaryStoriesTribute.com. I'll put a link in the description of the video. But uh, with that in mind, guys, thank you for watching Heftober. Thank you for uh, everything you guys do. And as always, always appreciated but never necessary. If you dig what I'm doing, like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, and... Uh, What's your favorite scary story to tell in the dark? Leave in the comments below, guys. Let's roll that 2020 intro and get right to it. When I wake up. Eight-year-old Bradley awoke in the night from a terrible dream. Frightened, he got up and climbed the little ladder to the top bunk where his brother slept then reached around in the dark to feel for his foot. But there was no one there. Maybe he went to get a drink of water or go to the bathroom, the boy thought. Bradley decided to go to the next room to sleep in the bed with his mother and father. He went down the hall and opened his parents' door a crack, then snuck inside and carefully tried to lay down without waking them. But there was no one there to snuggle up to. The bed and the room were empty. He went to the light and flipped the switch but nothing happened. He crept to the kitchen and tried the lights. There seemed to be no power to the house at all. Bradley peered through the curtained window to see if anyone was outside, but he could see nothing. There were no street lights on, and the neighborhood was covered in a thick, ominous fog. After standing motionless for what seemed like an eternity, Bradley called out to his parents. Mom? Dad? But there was no reply. No sound of footsteps or voices anywhere. It was dead silent. The boy made his way through the house, anxiously checking each room. It was completely deserted. Back in the kitchen, as the reality of being left alone in the darkness with no explanation sunk in, Bradley's mind began playing tricks on him. It was then that he thought he saw something moving in the shadows near the refrigerator. Waves of terror coursed through him. He didn't know what to do. He froze and remained motionless in the dark. After a long period of standing perfectly still, Bradley summoned the courage to rush to the front door and feel around the little hooks for the spare key to the family van. As he searched, there came a sound from behind like a chair being moved over the linoleum floor. At that moment, he found the key and immediately darted out the front door to the detached garage. Once inside, he could just barely make out the vehicle that was parked there as usual. He looked out and discovered that his father's brown sedan was also still parked in the driveway. They didn't leave, he thought in a panic. I don't understand. Where are they? Where did they go? And what was that sound in the kitchen? Bradley didn't feel safe. He knew that he couldn't go back into the house alone. He was sure he'd seen something in the darkness. So, he climbed inside the back seat of the van and locked all the doors. His mind was racing, imagining the worst. His family was dead, had abandoned him, or simply disappeared. In the van, he began to feel more and more like he was being watched. He climbed under the bench seat and hid. Eventually, he fell asleep. When Bradley awoke, he found he was in his bedroom on the bottom bunk. It was all just a terrible dream, he thought. He was so disturbed by the experience that he got up, climbed the little ladder to the top where his brother slept, 
and then reached around in the dark to feel his brother's foot. But again, there was no one there. He ran to his parents' room. It was also empty. The house was completely deserted. The lights weren't working. The power just seemed to be out. Maybe I'm dreaming. This must all be a bad dream. When I wake up, everything will be all right. Bradley tiptoed through the dark towards the kitchen, and this time he went straight to the phone to call 911. But when he lifted the receiver and put it to his ear, he discovered the line was completely dead. Only a strange buzzing sound could be heard on the other end. Immediately after hanging up, he thought he saw something in the darkness moving towards him. In a desperate panic, Bradley bolted out the front door and ran down the street in his pajamas towards the neighbor's house. He repeatedly turned around to see if anything was following him, but nothing was there. The street lights were dark. There seemed to be no power in the area at all. When he reached the house, the boy began pounding on the door. No one answered, so he knocked on all the windows and called out for help, but there was no response. Bradley noticed bicycles lying in the front yard. He decided to borrow the closest bike and head for his aunt and uncle's house, which was several miles away. He had never done anything like this before, but then again, nothing like this had ever happened. Bradley began pedaling frantically down the road. He could barely see anything in the darkness and the fog. There were no cars driving on the main roads, no lights on, no people anywhere. Maybe it was because it was so late at night. He rode for over an hour on the dark main roads and the entire time saw no signs of other people. Bradley had never felt so lost and alone. When he reached his aunt and uncle's house, the boy once again pounded on the doors and the windows, but there was no one home. He climbed the fence and crawled through the dog door on the side of the house. Once inside, he searched every room, hyperventilating and in an utter panic. The rooms were all empty, and so were the beds. The phone didn't work. The lights didn't work. He was completely alone. Bradley was now hysterical and in tears, but he went silent when again he began to feel as if something was watching him. He then saw something moving in the shadows and began to hear a strange noise all around. He wanted to leave, to find a police station somewhere, anywhere. He desperately needed to find people, but he did not know where to go. He eventually hid in a bottom cupboard and stayed there. He curled up in a ball, trembling in the pitch black, hiding from the buzzing and humming sounds and from the moving shadows that were all around him. At some point, he fell asleep. When Bradley awoke, he found himself back in his bunk bed at home. He listened for his brother's breathing. There was no sound whatsoever. He somehow already knew that he was completely alone in the house, yet he felt that from the darkness, someone or something was watching him staring at him. There were strange sounds all around, although louder and more frightening than before. Something was moving in the darkness. With tears now streaming down his face, Bradley could do nothing but cover himself with his blanket. This is just a bad dream. Just a nightmare, he told himself. When I wake up, everything will be all right. 